Assalamu alaikum and hello. We are Sabrina, Aisha, Akila, Shahira, and Amira from Group 9 of Section 1 ENGL 2515. Our video today is on Angela Carter's The Courtship of Mr. Lion. Now, Angela Carter was born in Eastburn, England, 1940, and passed on in the year 1992. She was an English novelist, writer, and journalist. Carter's narratives consistently expose and challenge the conventional gender identities and stereotypes of traditional fairy tales. One of her famous works include a compilation of short stories, The Bloody Chambers. These stories are basically her own twist to traditional fairy tales like The Little Red Riding Hood, Who's in the Boots, and finally, our focus of today, Beauty and the Beast, in this case known as The Courtship of Mr. Lion. Unlike Beauty and the Beast, we won't find Gaston, Mrs. Potts, Chip, LaFoe, Coxworth, and so forth. Instead, Carter only introduces Beauty, her father, the Beast, and the Spaniel. Now the story opens with Beauty being in the kitchen. Her father informs her that he'll be heading out and he would be home by nightfall. But his car breaks down and he comes by a Palladian house behind wrought iron gates. There, he is welcomed not by the host of the mansion, but instead by a King Charles Spaniel. We'll also become aware of how poor he is, unable to afford even a single white rose's beauty asked for. Thus, when he eventually stumbles upon a single white rose in the garden of the mansion, he couldn't resist the urge to pluck the rose to bring home for beauty. But the beast appears and accuses Beauty's father of robbery, to which the latter apologizes for and explains his dear Beauty's wish. A bargain is then made. He may take the rose, but he has to bring Beauty to dinner. At first sight, Beauty is frightened at the beast's appearance. He has the features of both man and lion, but as time passes, she learns of his warmth and gentleness. Their relationship blossoms in time. So the story reaches its peak when spring arrives and Beauty has yet to return to Beast from her visit to her father as she promised. The Spaniel appears at a doorstep, drenched in exhaustion and mud from her travel. She alarms Beauty with the whimpers and relentless tugs at her dress. Thus, Beauty returns to the Palladian house to find Beast dying. As she flings herself out of him, crying for him promise to never leave him again, the Beast morphs into a Mr. Lion. A handsome man with a mane of a hair, very much alive. And thus marks the end of the courtship of Mr. Lion, where both Mr. and Mrs. Lion stroll happily down the garden of the mansion. So you see, it was 1960 when the story was first published, and that was when feminism was in full swing and Carter was an avid feminist. The courtship of Mr. Lion was rewritten in the context of 1960s London, where Carter lived. Society then regarded women as the weaker sex, incapable of independence and completely reliant on men. Characters of this story heed to the 20th century and maybe even the conventional stereotype of women, where the story opens with beauty being in the kitchen, which caters towards the preconceived idea of submissiveness. Moreover, when in the mansion, she takes up dainty hobbies and pastime activities. There, she passes time reading, indulging in embroidery, and walking in the gardens. However, this stereotype is then challenged when Beauty decides on her own free will to stay with the beast regardless of his horrendous appearance, all for the sake of her father whom she loves dearly. So undeniably, there are elements of magical realism present in the story. The most obvious instance is the transition of beast to a man, where his beastly features finally disappear and he is once again human. And another would be when Beauty's father arrives at the mansion, where the door opens and closes on its own, and he finds an assortment of fresh food and even a cart to a garage offering 24-hour rescue service with an access to a telephone. However, the issues and characteristics of the plot and characters, especially beauty, are centralized around elements of realism in a sense that they are grounded to Carter's 20th century feminist stance. So to conclude, Carter describes beauty to be pure, innocent, and reliant on men, in which case was a father and even beast for the wealth he provided her family. She seems to be stereotypically feminine, yet she is capable of making her own decisions. 
Jakarta plays along to the roles women are conditioned to succumb to and the objectification society imposes on them. Yet, she injects subtle contradictions to a stereotypical character. Beauty looks past Beast's outlook and grueling appearance. Instead, she sees him for the gentle being he is. Beauty is skin deep and so much more than meets the eye. This story teaches us that a person is almost always much more than what they appear to be. So that's all from us. We really, really hope you've learned a little something today. Until then, thank you for